Hello once again, everybody. It's so good to see everybody. Sometimes what we do is we edit out the other parts for our archives and for what we show on our website. So I do need to introduce myself in case that's the case. Once again, my name is Eric Bucci, and I'm the lead pastor here at the Cornerstone Church. Thank you so much for being here today. If this is your first time or you've not been here a long time, we want to welcome you. We count it a privilege and both an honor that you've chosen to worship with us here today on this beautiful rainy day. They say April shower bring May flowers. So I... That, that's what we're doing, so we're excited about that. And can you do me a big favor? We appreciate all the ones that are here the first time, and I appreciate you all. Also, everyone that is watching at home or wherever they're located, can we just give a big, cornerstone, obnoxious greeting, nice and loud, and a handshake? Come on. <laughs> Not handshake. Okay. All right. We are in the middle of a series called Unshakable, How to Be Unshakable in a World that is so toppy-turvy and going through difficult times. It's a study of the book of First Peter. First Peter is an amazing book written by one of Jesus' closest disciples, Peter. And it's about 50 to 60 A.D. The church is going through a lot of difficulty. Persecutions begin to mount. There he's, Peter is in Rome. He calls it Babylon, which represents Rome. And he's writing to a dispersed church that's going through all types of persecution. And what we've been doing is going line by line, verse by verse. I don't know when we're going to finish this book because there's so much good stuff in it. And, uh, and last week, we talked about something uh, kind of innocuous. We talked about slavery. <laughs> yeah, that was last week. This week is about women submitting. How many like to have my job right now? Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that, that's what's going on here today. And, and, you know, the Bible is just so amazing how it brings things up. And I just want to encourage you that it seems like in our culture today that if you disagree with somebody, as soon as you hear a buzzword, you shut them down and you put them in the extreme category. Can we not do that here today? I promise you here today, God's word is always reasonable. God's word is always true, and you can trust it. And I realize the word submission is such a negative word in our culture today. For example, when someone says to me, are you an evangelical Christian, I say, I don't classify myself as an evangelical Christian, even though I, in the strict stance of the word, I probably am, but evangelical Christian now means voter block of the Republican Party, right? And they think, that's what they think. So, no, I'm, no I, are you a Christian? Well, no, I, I'm not even a Christian anymore because Christian means nothing. It just means you live in the United States and you're not, you're not Muslim or something and you're not an atheist. You must be a Christian. No. I am a follower of Jesus Christ, and, and that means I'm a Christian. So a lot of these terms have lost their meaning and have been hijacked by culture. And one of those names is submission. It has such a negative connotation. It usually means that a woman is being beat up by her husband wearing a wife beater. And, and it mistreated, woman, you need to cook. Woman, you need to clean. And it's the old South, or not the, nothing along the South, but it's a patriarchal society that is keeping women in bondage and keeping women subverted and demeaned. And if we could just free ourselves from the patriarchal society, we'd be a better people. And unfortunately, there has been abuses uh, by men and women towards each other. We live in an imperfect world. And just because there is abuse doesn't mean you throw something out. Have you known anyone that has abused money? Okay. Well, if, if we act like our culture today, then since someone abuses money, we shouldn't use money anymore, right? No, of course not. People misuse and abuse everything. It does not mean it makes it invalid for everything. But today we're going to talk about submission. Yeah, I'm so happy I'm here today. All right, let's move forward. <laughs> And uh, let's move forward today. Okay, now I want to give you a little illustration today. Uh, these dogs got married. Yes, that's correct. It happened in, uh, in California. And October 25th, 2019, the sausage dog marriage of, I can't even say their name, Gandalf and Galdry. Uh, thank you, whatever. I don't care. They're silly dogs. But that's beside the point. But this couple, this couple that bought them were... Um, were Abram and Erin Adams, and they bought this dog, and the dog was alone, so they got another one, and they felt they were so good to each other, they decided to marry, and they called the local paper, and the news crew was there, and they had a whole story on them, and they got married. Yeah, and you know what I find so interesting, it seems like the dogs act more human, and the humans act more like dogs, and husband and wife bark at each other. So I, I think this dog understands submission. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say is, this does not seem that husbands and wives attack each other or barking at each other. Why can't we just do what they do? And I'm going to go ahead and read what they do. 
Uh, they love to snuggle, bark, walk, bathe. They do everything together. Isn't that sweet? Okay. I had to do something to lighten the load. This is a tough topic today. Can you just give me some smiles? I can't even see your smile because of the mask. Can I see your smiling eyes? You can't hide those smiling eyes. Okay. Isn't that how the song goes? All right. Let me just stop while I'm ahead. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Oh, this sounds great. You're afraid of your husband because he's going to whack you aside the head. Is this what it's all about? No, it's not. But we're going to spend our entire time on these two words. And then we want to get to other stuff later on. We're talking about husbands. And by the way, it gets to the husbands later on as well. And, and so what does it mean? Well, there's two keys. Wives, likewise, and be submissive. Okay, wives, likewise, be submissive. Likewise. What does likewise mean? Likewise means? Likewise. Okay, basically, everything else that came before this verse, likewise, it's identifying, it's hitching up the last series of verses with this one. Now, I don't like this very much because I, I don't like what the Bible says sometimes. I'd rather not listen to it and do something that's more politically correct or something more expedient. But guess what? I don't get to make that choice. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. His word is true. It may not be popular. It not, may not be liked by people. But his word does not change. The Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And the Bible is very, very clear about these things. But again, I want to encourage you not to turn off what I'm saying today or the Bible based upon uh, a word. But what does it mean likewise? <clears throat> Omaios, if I said it correctly, I, I practiced this from my old Greek. Omaios simply means to being similar in some respect. Likewise, so, similarly, in the same way. So in the same way, this is what it means. It brings us back to the rest of the verses. Now, what are the rest of the verses? It's likewise to what, wives? Well, let's go back and review. Okay? Remember, our actions spring from our identity. Our actions spring up from your, what you believe about your identity. Your identity is so important. You need to know who you are in Christ. And if you are Christ, you have an identity. And you need to become familiar with that identity because the world is going to try to identify with you with something else. They're going to say your past defines you. They're going to say your job defines you. They're going to say that what your mistakes or, or what you did in triumph or tragedy define you. And that's not true. What defines you is Jesus Christ. Remember, your sin does not define you. Your Savior defines you. And when you understand that, you can shake off the bad and move on up. And that's what God would have for us. So your actions spring from that. If we fully embrace our identity in Christ, it will radically impact our behavior in the world. It will. And the world may not like the choices you and I make because the closer we get to God and as the world gets further away from God, you can see a lot of disorder in the world. But let's go ahead and look at our identity. Remember I told you a couple of weeks ago to look yourself in the mirror and begin to tell yourself who you are. You need to know who you are and whose you are. And this is what you are. If you've given your life to Christ, this is what you are. Here, ready we go. But you are a chosen race. That's right. You are a race of people beyond your ethnicity. You are a child of God. I may be a German American, but I am first a Christ follower. I am a son. I am a son of God. Uh, I live for God. And yes, I happen to be Italian and German, whatever the mix I am. All right, let's move on. But you are a chosen race, a royal priest. So you got royal blood in you, a holy ethnic. You are a nation. You are above the United States. Your nation, you are on furlough. You are only aliens passing through. You're only at a rest stop here on our journey to heaven. A people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is your identity. And we go on. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Look at your neighbor. I'm going to keep you awake here. And even at home, say, you're God's people. And say, that's incorrect grammar. All right. You're God's person. All right, here we go. God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now, we go on. Now, what does this mean? Now that you know your identity... What does this flesh out in ordinary life? Well, keep your conduct among the Gentiles. Those are non-believing people. That's what it meant in the early church. 
honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, have you noticed that? They call good evil and evil good. As they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. You may not be known for your good, good deeds among other people, but one day you will be. One day when you stand before God, God is going to honor you for what you do. So what Peter does is Peter now talks about what this means, your identity and what you're called to do. Now, what does that look like? Peter gives us illustrations. He gives us three. We've been talking about the last three weeks in Easter in the middle. He says, all in authority, including government. So we are to submit ourselves to all in authority, including government, except when they disobey God. Then you have a right not to listen to it. If they ask you to do something that violates your faith, you have a right not to listen to it. We also spoke to the fact that the only way how you and I work in this world, we got to do a couple things. Number one, we got to go at war with ourselves. We have to go at war with the sin inside of us. Okay? That's your biggest nemesis is not the world. It's, the, it's your own self. Go to war with yourself and always do the right thing. It's always right to do the right thing. So we talked about that. So all authority in government. Then we talked about <laughs> last week was slavery. Let's go back next week, last week. You can listen to it on iTunes or Spotify or go on our website. I'm not going to re-preach it. But we talked about slaves and working for a boss who's a jerk. My wife doesn't like when I say jerk. I'm sorry she's not here. I can get away with it. All right. And finally, we also spoke about Jesus who suffered and let God's justice reign. Now, all of that, that's likewise. This part is hitched to this next section. You cannot disassociate or break it off. So when it says wives, likewise, so the same type of submission we talked about, be submissive. Submissive. What does that mean? Submissive means place yourself under the authority of another partially. Submission is also, in the biblical sense of the word, submission is not just doing the work, but having the right attitude, having a submissive heart. So like, be submissive. And basically the Greek word means subject yourself, submitting yourself. Same word found in 2.18. So subjecting and submitting yourself and preferring and listening. Okay? Now this is quite amazing. So there's basically three basic verb tenses in the word submission. And this verb tense is in different ways. In this passage, I'm sorry, this is not a grammar lesson. I apologize. But just, it, I think it's important to know this. Because what happens is, when you speak another language, like my wife speaks uh, Spanish. And, uh, and what happens sometimes, I go with her family. And she tries to translate when I went over to Columbia some things. And I try to tell a joke. And it, it went off like a Charlie Brown lead balloon. Uh, I've been on mission trips. Trying to, telling jokes in different cultures doesn't work very well because it doesn't always translate correctly. And so even though we have these English translations, it's good to go back to the original. It's good to have grammatical helps. And so let me explain what it means. It's, uh, um, by the way, Greek and Latin are part of the foundations that create the English language. So we're, a lot of the words we have come from Greek and Latin. So anyhow, active voice. The first thing we have is an active voice. That is, the subject is doing the action. So if I'm playing tennis, I'm hitting the ball, okay? I'm, I'm giving the action. Another one is a passive voice, the subject receiving the action. The tennis ball is getting hit by the racket. Okay, the tennis ball is receiving the action upon it. It is not instigated, but it's, it's receiving it upon it. The third voice is middle voice, and that is you are doing the action yourself. So in other words, I am hitting the ball. And I am submitting myself to the process. So versus, the first one is subject is doing it to the object, right? The person is doing it to the tennis ball. The second one is the tennis ball is receiving the action. And the third one is, is that you are voluntarily making the choice. So what basically is, is I am submitted willingly. That is what's happening. It's not just an outward sign. It's not just going the letter of the law. It's not just like that little boy we talked about last week who said, although I may be sitting in the inside and sitting on the outside, I'm standing on the inside. It's submitting yourself inside as well. So what does this necessarily mean? What does this actually mean? Submission. Not in equality or in inferiority. Okay? What submission does not mean. I think it's important to know what it means. When it says you're submitting to someone, it does not mean you're less than. It does not mean that you're subservient. It does not mean you're not as important as. 
that needs to be known very, very, very clear. This world loves to put people in caste systems. We love to rank people and put them in silos, and God doesn't do that. God comes, dies for the whole world, right? He's an equal opportunity God. And one of the greatest verses in Scripture that basically has caused the early church a lot of trouble because this, we talked about this last week and how it messed up the slave trade and messed up how husbands and wives treat each other and messed up a lot of foreign nations because this put everything in equality. Here it is. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's no male and no female. He's not suggesting that we don't have identities. What he's suggesting is value, Okay. No, and for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. That means we have the same rights according to Scripture as Abraham. Now, that's amazing. We can unpack this for the next seven or eight weeks, just that statement alone. So, what does this basically mean? We go back to Genesis. So, God created man... In his own image. By the way, mankind includes woman. Okay? So God created man in his own image, the image of God. He created them what? Male and female. You are in God's image. That's a good thing. He created them. So another thing very interesting is that Jesus was submissive for 30 years. Do you realize that? He lived under his parents' tutelage. He worked for his father probably as a carpenter. He's called the carpenter's son. Back in those days, you would work as an apprentice. And so he did all those things. He was a good Jewish boy. He did all he was supposed to do. And it says in Luke 2.51, the same word for, for submission we find here in this passage in 1 Peter. And it has the same verb tense. Then he, that's Jesus, went down with them and came to Nazareth and was what? Subject or submitted to them. But his mother kept these things in her heart. Now, is Jesus greater than his parents? Every teenager thinks that. But in, re in reality, in reality, is Jesus greater than his parents? Yes, he was. He was greater than his parents, but he submitted to them. He, Jesus would have no sin. No sin. Can you imagine being, uh, can you imagine being Jesus' brother? Jesus, no, I guess he didn't do it. Anyhow, but Jesus had no sin at all. And he submitted himself to imperfect parents, an imperfect uh, temple synagogue system with imperfect leaders. He subjected himself to an imperfect Roman governance. He paid his taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah, he paid his taxes. He did everything as he was supposed. He submitted himself, everybody. He did. Now, later on, of course, we talk about what happened later on. He submitted himself to God. He obeyed God rather than man. Of course he did that, right? But before then, he submitted himself. So the, the question is here, because it says women submit, wives submit does not mean they're inferior to their husbands at all. That would mean that Jesus was inferior to his parents, and he wasn't. I hope that's clear. Let's move forward as we go through this. Therefore, in Ephesians 5.17... This is a parallel passage in some regards. It goes a lot deeper than Peter does, but we're going to ahead, go ahead and read it because it, it has great merit to it, okay? So, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand the will of the Lord is. You want to know the will of the Lord? It goes on. It says, singing spiritual songs, making melody in your heart, giving joy to the Lord. It says, we live in an evil day. It goes on with a list of things. Then it gets to verse 21. It says something quite extraordinary. It says this, submitting to what? Who's one another? That's correct. We are to submit, submitting, which is submitting to one another. That I'm supposed to submit to you, you're supposed to submit to me. Now, what happens if I look out for your betterment and I give you the best? If I, if I open the door for you, open the door for me. I mean, what happens if I want not my rights to be made, but I want to make sure your rights are being made? So my objective is to submit to you, is to give you preference. Now, how are you supposed to argue with someone that does that? The problem with you and I is I want something out of you. I want to extract something out of you. I want to extract respect. I want, to, uh, res I want you to like me, and I'm talking to you because I want something from you. How beautiful is it when you act towards someone, and not because you want something out of them, but you do it because you care about them exclusively, not because you want something out of them. Whew, isn't that nice? You know how you go to a store, and the salesperson is like really aggressive, like you must be on commission. And you go to another store, they don't care about you. And you say, where's the thing? Ah, it's over there. 
right? I go to Costco. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give one. I love Costco. Okay. I go to Costco, and I said, where is it? They drive me over there. They bring, no, drive me. They walk me over there. And they, I say, you own your commission? No. So be like a Costco employee. You know, speaking of Costco, my brother, my brother brought back a sound bar. It wasn't working on my parents' TV. He brought it back to Costco after four years, and they gave him a full refund. What nerve he has. All right. So that's that submitting process, right? Submitting to one another in the fear of God. In Ephesians 5, 21, it says this. Submitting to one another in the fear of God, wives submit your, to your own husbands. It says own husbands, not all men. Hello? The women need to listen to us. No. To their husbands. Submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, also as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. What happens if your husband is, well, I don't want to say the word. My wife doesn't like when I say the word jerk, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> what happens if your husband is irresponsible? What happens if your husband takes the paycheck and goes and goes to Foxwoods and gambles at, at crap tables? What happens if your husband spends things and buys Harley Davidsons and fishing gear and the kids have cardboard for shoes? What do you do then? You're supposed to submit to that? What happens if he slaps you around the house and tells you to do this and this and the other? What then? Am I supposed to? This, this, is, the, this is the scary part. The, the, uh, the presupposition in this passage is a husband that's not a believer. Now, it doesn't mean that you get abused. We're going to get into that in a few moments. We're going to, we're going to scale this a little more. But right now, I just want to read it to you. Why submit yourself to your own husbands as to the Lord. Husbands, husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. So many people are getting up. I just sensed it, like the ice people getting upset. Hang on. We're going to get into the husbands, by the way. It's coming. The guys, you're not off the hook yet. I'm just going by the scripture. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. He died for the church. Hello, right? Come on. He died for the church that he might sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church. This is the Mary Kay and Avon verse. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. This is not a verse for plastic surgery. Just want to get that clear. Let's move on. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. Now, do you take your arm and beat yourself up and hurt yourself? No. Look what the Word of God says. Okay? He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does to the church. Now, within a relationship like that, there's not going to be any problem with submission. But we're going to break this down even some more. Let's go on to what it says. For we are members of his body. We are all members of the body of Christ. Every member has value and function and purpose. You don't say to the foot, you don't matter. You don't try to have the hands walk as the feet walk. You have different things. Okay? So, what submission does not mean? We're going to talk about that. It means not inequity or inferiority. We talked about it already does not mean a woman should submit to men in every area of life. You can't be going around. It's almost like when someone tries to boss your kids around and they're not the parent. That just irritates me to no end. Someone, like, yells at my child and spanks them. That's what, when I grew up, by the way, in Yonkers, New York, that's what used to happen. I played with matches one day, and the neighbor lady spanked me and brought me to my parents, and my parents spanked me. <laughs> Today she'd be in prison. Anyhow, not my parents, but the lady next door. I can't remember her name. I think Mrs. Blaine, her name was. Yeah, lovely woman. <laughs> she needs to... Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> but does not mean women should submit to men in every area of their lives, just to their husbands. What is that supposed to mean? I don't like that submitting. Well, let me explain. Let me give you a little illustration of... of I'm not saying I do it right, but my wife and I, we understand Scripture. And let me tell you right now that... <laughs> you know on a sports team, you have the team captain who kind of leads the team, right? 
How many people know that sometimes team captains are not the most valuable player? Well, I tell you right now, I may be the captain of the team of the Bucci family, but the most valuable player is my wife, Sandra, hands down. She hits all the home runs. She cleans up the bases. She does everything, right? She's the most valuable player. Unquestionable. And so it isn't about that, but we submit to each other. And we also give each other veto power. If I, if I want to do something, a big issue, she says, no, I don't normally do it. Well, what kind of man are you? Because my wife and I, we work together. But she does submit to me. It's the proper order of things. Doesn't mean I'm better. We have different function. Uh, a, uh, a men might be the evening, and women might be the day. Why are we trying to make the day night and the night day? What the day be day and the night be night. They work together. Hello. Men, biological men can't have babies. Why? I know that's like, like ridiculously obvious. But when God gives over to a reprobate mind to a culture, they don't even know the obvious things. Now, we love all people. We want to see people know Christ. But God has given us this beautiful thing. Why do I want my hand to be a foot? Right? Are all teachers? Are all... The Bible talks about that. The Bible is beautiful. Are all white? Are all African American? Are all Asian? No, we're all together. What a beautiful... Aren't you glad we're not all hamburgers and fries? Thank God for that. Or chicken nuggets like kids like. No, mac and cheese and chicken nuggets. No, thank God for all the different foods in the world. Why not embrace the, the, the diversity of God's creation? Each one has a gift. So it does not mean we should, it does not mean that women should submit to men in every life. And husbands is not the only authority. Unfortunately, being alive, as long as I've been alive, I've seen things I wish I never saw. In circumstances I've been a part of, I've seen women beaten by their husbands. Not, but I've seen the aftermath of it. And we've made trips to people's homes. My, my father's done that. And uh, he, my dad, I'll tell you, well, my dad has an Italian temper in him a little bit. And man, he went to that house and he demanded, you know, I was like, Dad, I mean, now that I know what he did, I would call the police. You're likely to get yourself killed. But listen, if you are being abused by your husband or your wife abusing you, you do not need to be under that abuse. They're going out of God's authority. And call the church. I'll call the police for you. I'll even drive over there with a posse of guys with baseball bats if I have to. Oh, how could I say that? Well, because it makes me angry to see any man to beat a child or a woman or an elderly person. I would not get a baseball bat. I shouldn't have said that. Take it out of the sermon. But I want something a part of me wants to protect. That's what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to protect each other, right? If I see anyone being beaten up, you do not, you do not need to be in that thing. I heard a woman say, well, I'm supposed to submit to my husband. I said, no, your husband is using that as an abusive verse. That is not what you're called to do. No one should be submitted to, to abuse like that. And also, even verbal abuse. Verbal abuse does not mean clean the bed or clean the toilet. I'm talking to verbal abuse where they're just, they're just cutting you apart and you're having all kinds of emotional problems and post-traumatic stress syndrome and all that. God doesn't want you under that either. I'm not talking divorce, but you get what you tolerate. Get out of that situation. Get help. Get help. Amen. Do I have an amen crowd over here? So I'm just telling you right now, husbands is not the only authority. I don't know about you, but I'm sorry, but when I see children abused, when I see women abused, I see the elderly abused, something inside of me rises up in me. I didn't mean to say that, but I, you know, I just how I feel, okay? Because I hate to see people abused. So, wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct according, accompanied by fear. We're gonna break that down a little bit more. I have a, a few final words if it's, uh, I want to mention to you, what are some applications here? What does it mean? Well, um, if you're not married and you're single, ladies, young girls, if you can't submit to a male, a man's leadership and don't respect the male, don't think he can take care, don't marry him, please. If he's not a believer, don't marry him. I'm just telling you, that's for free. Okay. Embrace submission as your divine calling as worship. Okay, God set up a pattern. That pattern works. When we break the pattern, we suffer consequences. Remember, it's not value. 
its identity and its purpose. Submission is your responsibility, not your husband's. We're going to get to the guys next week. And submission is a spiritual matter, a test of your heart. If your husband is not being responsible, then you do need to get some help. That's why we have the church. That's why we have counselors. That's why we're not supposed to do this life alone. If you have trouble with your husband or something like that, listen, we're here to help you. We're here to help you guys. And sometimes we go through stuff, and we should be working together as a body of Christ. And I believe in this statement. I heard it a number of years ago. I wrote it down. I put it in my little, my quotes folder. And this is what I believe is true. There is a 100% success rate for couples in marriage who both obey God's word in relationship with him. If a husband and a wife both follow God and obey God, there's no reason why anyone has to go through a divorce. And if you have, I know there's other circumstances. There's only two places in the scripture for it, infidelity and if you're abandoned by a non-believing spouse. Okay. So, God will not bless your mission until you learn submission. A lot of you really uh, appreciated the, the sermon last week about what do you do when your boss is a, uh, the J word. And, uh, and I talked about that. Some of the same principles apply to wives and husbands. And, you know, your husband's behavior is not the standard of submission. When he, then I will. That never works. That never works. You the one that brings the grace first. Make submitting to your difficult husband an act of worship. But do it in a right way. Being mistreated does not give you the right not to submit. However, being beaten verbally or physically is never appropriate ever. Let me make that abundantly clear, everybody. God never calls you to be under any kind of abuse like that. I hope that's clear, everybody. And God will not bless your mission until you learn submission. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for today, and I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I know this is a hard word, but Father, you have set the pattern up. You put the seasons in place. You put the sun that revolves around the, uh, as the earth revolves around the sun and has an orbit. As we have seasons, we have day, we have night. Father, you have put all these things in together, molecules and cells, and you're a God of order. You're a God of beauty. And Father, you are so beautifully constructed both male and female to be a family to propagate lord god to expand to be fruitful to multiply lord you've done an amazing work father forgive us for looking at your creative order and saying nope father we want to extend submit to your pattern of living father i pray for right now for any women that are struggling undoubtedly in our size church there are people right now that are receiving abuse. And Father, I pray that they'd have courage to get the help and not put up with that abuse. Lord, if there's any men that are struggling with abuse as well, they would not put up with it either. Father, we know we have not called us to be abused. So Lord, we're asking for grace upon marriages in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that we be a healthy church in every capacity in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, I always like to be able to do this every service is this. I, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. I, I am more convinced that's important because of events that have happened in recent days. You never know when you're going to be called to meet God. Are you ready to meet God? The truth be, you're not ready to meet God unless you've given your life to Jesus because you're not good enough and I'm not good enough. You have to be willing to say, my life's not mine. I gave my life to God. That is the way it works. Jesus died on the cross for you. We just talked about through the uh, baptism. He rose again from the dead. And he paid a debt you could not pay. So if you'd like to give your life to Christ for the very first time, or maybe you walked away, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. If you don't mind just bowing your head, closing your eyes, and, and reverence for other people. Amen. Just so I know better how to pray. How many of you would say today, Pastor, I, I want to give my life to Christ for the first time. Or I've walked away and I want to get right. Anyone this morning, let's be real this morning. Anyone this morning would say that. Okay. Let's pray this prayer together in our hearts. Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. Today, I willingly step down from being in charge of my life. I give my life to you completely. Take my life. It is yours. I also ask you to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong. 
thank you that I am now your child based upon what you did for me on the cross. In Jesus' name, I am loved and I am your child. And I am a new creation in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe you got born again. Jesus never says, say this prayer and see you later. No, he didn't say that. He says, come, follow me. And what we are, we are a place where we follow Christ here as a community of believers. We want to encourage you to get involved in that way. We're going to have some folks up front to pray with you. The information desk, we have Bibles for you. Go ahead and tell someone in your pocket in front of your seat, there is a card. You can just pull that out. It's a connection card. If you made a decision today for the very first time, a recommitment, that'd be great. Also, you can go on, uh, if you're online, we have a way to do it with a telephone number. If you put it up there, thank you so much. You can get your phone out, text, and uh, put in your text to 860-499-4888 and write belief, and that will happen. We want to help you with your next steps. Also, there's ways to give to this church. I want to thank you for doing that. The Bible says bring me a whole tithe, 10% into the storehouse, and watch what I'll do. You don't have to give. You get to give. And these are the four ways you can give. Text Cornerstone Cheshire to 77977. Our push pay app, cornerstonecheshire.com. You can mail it. If you, and you're here in person, we have boxes in the back. Please drop the connection cards in there and also your offerings. Hey, guys, thank you so much. I want to conclude this time with a blessing. We do it every week. May the Lord bless you. May he fill you with his presence. May you walk in the sonship and the daughtership of his favor. Thank you, God, that you've given us all that we need to live in godliness. I pray peace, love, and the joy of the Holy Ghost to touch every person. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much.